Just give me the okay. Okay? All right. Good morning. Good morning, and, and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Steamfitters Local Union 420. Welcome to the Tam Graham HVAC shop. Uh, it's an honor and a pleasure to have everybody here today. It's, it's a tremendous honor to have my good friend, Governor Shapiro, in attendance. He's going to give you some big news, uh, as a matter of fact, shortly. We have Secretary of Labor Nancy Walker in the house. We have Delaware County District Attorney Jack Stolzheimer here, and also State Senator uh, uh, Jimmy Dillon. Um, so we're very excited uh, for this big announcement that the governor has. Um, we were just uh, in the back office there talking. Such, such cool plans that the governor has uh, with this executive order that he's doing in regards to workforce development. At the end of the day, it's about jobs for us, okay? What he's going to talk about is jobs, putting people to work, putting you, our members, brothers and sisters, putting us out in the field to work. And this is, this is, all, this is what we're about, right? Trying to live the American dream, being able to provide for your families, put some food on the table, maybe be able to spend a week down the Jersey Shore and have a couple bucks in your pocket to buy your daughter some tap shoes or or you know, a couple bucks in your pocket to buy your son a baseball mitt. So when we hear jobs, which the governor is going to talk about, it gets us excited. So, but it, first things first, I want to introduce a 10th period apprentice, Danny Sampson. He's in, he's a service apprentice with Local 420. Uh, Dan, he's a, this is his first press conference. So uh, give Dan a warm round of applause. Come on up, Dan. You're gonna do great, Pop. <laughs> okay. Uh, hi, my name is Danny Sansom. Uh, I'm a 10th period apprentice here at Local 420. Um, they asked me to say a few words here today about my time and experience as a steam fitter. Uh, so I joined 420 almost five years ago, expecting to work hard, learn a great trade, and uh, that's what happened. I, I began working for a contractor immediately. Uh, and I received an education from the most knowledgeable instructors this industry has to offer. Uh, what I didn't expect was for my life to change so much along the way. Uh, in the last five years as an apprentice, I've gained a career, I bought my first house, I got married, I became a father. Uh, I know I speak for a lot of my other classmates and uh, union brothers when I say we, we grow up in this apprenticeship. Uh, Local 420 provided us the opportunity and the resources to make that possible. Uh, joining this union was one of the greatest decisions I've ever made. And uh, I encourage others to do the same. And uh, I'd like to thank Governor Shapiro and the Hall for letting me share today and uh, introduce our Secretary of Labor, Nancy Walker. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, on behalf of the Department of Labor and Industry, we are excited to put the Commonwealth Workforce Transformation Program into action for the people of Pennsylvania, the first of its kind in the nation. As Governor Shapiro said Monday when he signed our executive order, this program will help build a well-trained workforce today as well as have us prepared for the jobs and needs of the future. Pennsylvania is facing challenges. This is a historically tight labor market. We are seeing historically low levels of unemployment and historically high numbers of jobs. Barriers such as reliable transportation, reliable internet, childcare stand in the way of many Pennsylvanians. We need to connect underserved communities with well-paying, family-sustaining jobs like the jobs all of you have. To overcome those challenges, we need to invest in people, as Governor Shapiro says so regularly. Our workforce is key to Pennsylvania's economy, and we will continue to find new and creative ways to engage Pennsylvanians who want to work. That is exactly what the Commonwealth Workforce Transformation Program will do. It will invest in workers and the companies and businesses that employ them. What that means is it will bring 10,000, up to 10,000 new workers into Pennsylvania's labor force who will directly contribute to the completion of critical infrastructure jobs across the Commonwealth. 
As you know, the governor and I are passionate about career education and creating opportunities for all people. This program is yet another expression of that vision. Under the leadership of Governor Shapiro, we will continue to build Pennsylvania through good jobs and economic opportunity for everyone. Labor and industry is excited to implement this new program and to work with companies across the Commonwealth to train the next generation of skilled workers. So employers, we've set up a website, go to pa.gov, new jobs, learn more, and it is my absolute and distinct pleasure to introduce the Governor of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Josh Shapiro. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Secretary. It's a good day to be back at 420, and I want to say, first and foremost, Danny, you did a great job. Great job. And um, Jimmy, you know how I know this is a good, healthy union? Because while Danny was talking, you could see the other apprentices both feeling a sense of respect and pride for Danny, and also whispering to one another, busting his chops <laughs> while he was talking. I saw you all do that, but it was from a place of love, it's man. And, it's a Northeast and I think it's a Northeast thing, he right. says. Um, speaking of Northeast, it's good to be back in Northeast Philly with Jimmy Dillon and to be in Northeast Philadelphia with all of our roads intact. I was spending a whole bunch of time with him on 95 and appreciate his leadership here in this community. Um, and we've got a friend from the neighboring counties, Delaware County, with us, Jack Stolsteimer, one of our finest DAs in the Commonwealth, who goes out and, and uh, prosecutes corrupt uh, employers who are taking advantage of workers uh, every single day. And so, Jack, we appreciate you being with us. Thank you very, very much. Um, I want to thank my friend Jim Snell for having us back here at 420 and showing us the way of the future. And the way of the future runs through union halls and training centers just like this. And so I wanted to be here today to have the chance to make a major announcement when it comes to workforce development in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. You know, from my very first day in office as the 48th governor, I've worked hard to put policies in place and, and moves in place to expand our workforce, to grow our economy, and create real opportunity for the good people of Pennsylvania. On my first full day in office, I signed an executive order doing away with the college degree requirement for thousands of state government jobs, to be precise, over 65,000 state government jobs, 92% of them, to make very clear that we value skills, we value experience in Pennsylvania, not arbitrary degree requirements. And I want you to know we've gotten serious about our Commonwealth's commitment to training the next generation of workers. Both the House and Senate recently passed our state budget. Soon they'll send it to me to sign once they come back from their summer vacation. And in that bill, it contains more funding for VOTEC than before and more resources for apprenticeship programs all across Pennsylvania. We want to create a pipeline of success that starts in our middle schools and high schools, runs through halls like this, and then out in the field doing the important infrastructure work of tomorrow. I understand that while AI and biotech and new technology gets a lot of attention in our changing economy, we are still a people-powered economy here in Pennsylvania, and you are the people who are doing the work necessary for us to be able to grow our economy tomorrow. And as I said before, we value skills and experience of our tradesmen and women, and we respect the work that you do every single day. People like Danny, who you heard from a moment ago, and the other apprentices here at 420 who I had the chance to visit with for a few moments before we came out here, you're doing the hard work necessary to build up our infrastructure. And if you go back and you look at the history of this nation, the progress we have made can always be tied directly back to a meaningful investment in our infrastructure. And while you do that work, know that you, of course, have good paying jobs that help you support your families, support all of us by working on the projects that are critical to our future. Think about this. Right now, and Jim knows this, there are steam fitters working on a biotech leader known as Spark Therapeutics in Philadelphia to expand their campus in West Philadelphia and to develop genomic therapies that are literally going to save lives. They're going to be able to save lives because of the work you're doing in their facilities. 
You're helping build a 14-story research center so CHOP can do more life-saving research and save the lives of our youngest. You're building the largest life sciences building in the city for Drexel University. Not only that, right now there are 200 steam fitters working on site at the Monroe Energy Refinery in Delco to produce jet fuel that helps connect our country. Philly's success as a biotech hub and Pennsylvania's position as an energy leader is directly tied to the work that our steam fitters are doing every single day. You all should take great pride in that work. You are living proof that the power of a union and the power of union labor in this region is really awesome. In good times of need and in times of great need, I've seen what we can accomplish together. When a critical stretch of I-95 collapsed and the so-called experts told us it would take months to rebuild, it was union labor that worked 24 seven to rebuild that critical roadway in just 12 days, 12 days. Right now, we have an opportunity to build on that success on 95 and quite literally rebuild this nation. Thanks to the historic federal infrastructure funding championed by the Biden administration, we are in a position to take on major projects and infrastructure again in this country. Under the Bipartisan Infrastructure Bill and Inflation Reduction Act, Pennsylvania is set to receive at least $19 billion to repair, rebuild, and construct the infrastructure we need for tomorrow. Let me give you a few examples of how that breaks down. Pennsylvania is going to receive over a quarter billion dollars for home efficiency energy projects. That means new appliances, heat pumps, energy efficient air conditioning systems installed in our homes that will help Pennsylvanians save on their electric bills, all built and installed by the kind of workers we have right here at 420. That's why we need to keep constantly training more and more steam fitters in facilities like this right here in Northeast Philly. Just this week, Jim Snell welcomed over 40 new apprentices. And as I said before, I just met with some of them. But like contractors and union leaders all across Pennsylvania, Jim knows this, we're collectively struggling to find enough workers to do all of the work of tomorrow and seize on this moment where we have such a significant amount of federal funding. That is why on Monday, standing with other union leaders on the other side of the state in Pittsburgh, I signed an executive order, as the Secretary said, the first of its kind in our nation, to invest up to $400 million of that federal funding in workforce training to create 10,000 new infrastructure jobs right here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So let me kind of put a finer point on this and explain how this investment is going to work. Because I understand when you start talking billions of dollars, hundreds of million dollars, it's kind of hard to understand how that all fits together and improves your lives individually as apprentices and improves our collective lives across our region and our commonwealth. Under the leadership of Secretary Walker at the Department of Labor and Industry and Brian Regley, our Director of Critical Investments, my administration is now going to work with contractors and unions who are working on federally funded projects to encourage them to hire new workers and provide them with meaningful on-the-job training, whether through a pre-apprenticeship program, an apprenticeship program, or through a training center. If they commit to training that worker on the job and then keeping them on the job for at least six months, the Commonwealth will reimburse that employer up to $40,000 to basically pay for that worker to get trained and take the risk out of it for the contractor, for the employer, up to $40,000 per worker. That allows you to get more on-the-job training quicker and allows the contractors to have more people that they can train, and ultimately it swells the ranks of workers here at 420 and elsewhere who are prepared to do this infrastructure work of tomorrow. We also recognize from listening to apprentices that it's not just dollars and cents that holds them back. There's other critical barriers. So we understand that childcare 
can be a need that you have to be able to come to work. We understand that the cost of uniforms and licenses and other certificates makes it harder for you to participate in the workforce. So this initiative under the executive order I signed covers those costs as well to allow you to get to work and allow you to get to work quickly. And hear me on this because this is critically important. We have made it clear that we will prioritize applications to this program for projects that are subject to project labor agreements or a community benefits agreement to make sure our workers are being fairly treated. Now is a moment where we have to take advantage of this opportunity to not only rebuild our infrastructure, but create real opportunity here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And when we put more union workers on the job, not only will they help get the job done, but when they go on to that next project, they'll be union members doing the work the right way with the technical skills they need to build safe, build efficiently, build effectively, and make sure the public has confidence in the project that they built. Look, my vision for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania is one where everyone has the freedom to chart their own course and the opportunity to succeed. And if y'all wanna go straight into the workforce, we should make sure you have the skills and the opportunity to be able to be successful and provide for your family. We'll eliminate the arbitrary barriers for those who have been told in the past you must have a college degree and instead show that we value skills and training and work experience here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And now, thanks to this executive order, we are going to open up the doors of opportunity for 10 thousand more workers here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. 10,000 people looking to start a new chapter in their life. And in that group, some returning citizens that deserve a second chance. Folks who have battled addiction and overcome it, but an employer won't take a chance on them, now they will because of this initiative. We are going to build the best, most highly skilled workforce in the nation will be a model for other states to follow, and we are going to compete again here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. This is a creative, innovative solution that we're excited to launch right here in Northeast Philadelphia. This is going to give us the opportunity to chart our own course tomorrow. This is what real freedom looks like in our nation, where we value individuals for who they are and we give them the opportunity to get ahead. I'm proud to be back here at 420 to make this announcement. I'm incredibly grateful for the friendship of Jim Snell and the leaders here at 420, but, and I mean this with respect, Jim, I'm most proud of all of you, the apprentices, the folks who are going to rebuild our nation tomorrow. Thank you all very, very much for being here. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, um, before we get a chance to chat, Danny's agreed to answer all the questions from the media. So we'll give the media a couple moments. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, is there a specific person that you're going to select to, to oversee this program? The program will be overseen by our Secretary of Labor and our Director of Critical Investments. Within the Department of Labor and Industry, there will be a Deputy Secretary who tracks all this, provides the data back to you, tracks those 10,000 jobs that we're going to create and the work that they go on to do. And we'll be providing the public with regular updates on our progress. Governor, I know this is going to focus on infrastructure. Are there any specific projects that you think are really vital to Pennsylvania over the next couple of years that you need these workers for? Look, when you think about the federally funded infrastructure projects, of course it's road and bridge repair, and we know we need a lot of that in the Commonwealth. It's also making sure our buildings, our schools, homes, etc., are more energy efficient, new HVAC systems. That's critically important to both give people a comfortable environment to learn and work and live in, but also really important when we're thinking about combating climate change. The steam fitters are on the front lines of addressing climate change through that important HVAC work they're doing. I'll give you another example. I've made a pledge to connect the 326,000 roughly homes, businesses, churches, VFWs, you name it, that lack internet access across our Commonwealth to the internet over the next five years, we're going to need highly trained, specialized skills to go and do that work, and we're already training folks to do that work tomorrow. Those are some examples of the kind of important federally funded infrastructure work that we're going to be working on here in Pennsylvania through the steam fitters and others helping us along the way. 
Governor, one topic off question. Uh, sure. One question on Can I come back to you on that? Anything else on this? Okay. Uh, you mentioned the need to kind of get these types of programs into middle schools and high schools. Are you also engaging the Department of Education to kind of get that going? Under the, the funding, the really historic level funding we have for VOTEC, pre-apprenticeship programs, things like that, all of that is running through the Department of Education in concert with the Department of Labor and Industry. And our secretary, Dr. Mameen, is already putting plans in place to drive that funding out to our schools so they can ramp up their VOTEC programs in their classrooms. Somebody sitting at home has been out of work for six, eight months. Here's this announcement, See, seeing you up there. Yeah. What's the first step for them? What do they do? How do they reach out? And, and where do they fit into this? Absolutely. We have a website uh, set up where they can learn more about this program. But honestly, what I would tell them to do is wander down here to 420. Go over to one of the other union halls. If steam fitting isn't your thing and you want to maybe go work on, on something else, wander over the union halls. They now have the resources to expand their apprenticeship programs, expand their training programs. We want them to go and uh, get engaged that way. Go ahead. Any comment on the latest indictment of the former president? Look, we had a front row seat here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and I certainly did as Attorney General, uh, to see all of the efforts that the former president and some of his enablers here in Pennsylvania undertook to try and overthrow the last election, to try to thwart the will of the good people of Pennsylvania. Ultimately, as we all know, they failed, and it's a good thing that they failed. Our democracy survived, our constitution held, and now the rule of law is showing that, as it has always been in our nation, it is applied equally and fairly across the board, no matter how powerful you are. The former president will now have to answer in a court of law for the crimes that he allegedly committed, uh, and that's now a process that will be underway in our court system, which is where it should play out. Thank you all very, very much. Appreciate you. Appreciate you guys. Thank you.